Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is part two of a part five series. Make sure you go and check out part one before watching this video. Thank you. It's been a week since I watched The Lady and the Cage for the first time, and almost that long since I felt anything approaching normal. You can feel it creep into your psyche that first time like a powerful drug unbalancing your perception of the world. It works its way between the synapses in your brain and becomes a lens through which you experience everything. The day after I watched it the first time, I woke up from just a few hours of restless sleep and started watching it again and again. The video continued to grow by split seconds with each viewing, a nightmarish zoo in a black and white world with horrible creatures in old-fashioned carnival cages and a long procession of captives and prisoners leading to a final, massive cage containing the titular entity like a drug, an unseen force compelled me to watch repeatedly for the split seconds added to the end with every viewing. I barely left my room that day, and when I wasn't watching the video, I was reading whatever I could find about it. Across dozens of Facebook pages, Discord groups, subreddits, forums, and chats, there are hundreds of posts where people gather to share scary anecdotes and dumb rumours. Most of them are nonsense buried among urban legends or third-hand accounts. My cousin's friend knew someone who watched it that led nowhere. There are claims that the lady comes out and gets you, that you disappear into the video, or that the video becomes the real world or other increasingly ridiculous bullshit. There's also plenty of speculation about what it is or what it means. Who made it or why? It's a zoo on another planet or dimension. It's some kind of red room, an urban legend where actual torture or murder is broadcast live on the internet. It's a European short film from the 30s repurposed to scare people now. Finally, my favourite, it's a literal gateway to hell. Commenters run the gamut from regular users to throwaways and anons to people on Facebook using their real names. Someone posted on a Chan site that they had the link and would share it for a Bitcoin payment. Uberfox claimed he made the video to fuck with people, and also that he is Q and that he killed Jeffrey Epstein. Tony RN02 claimed he was posting from inside the video. Others claimed that they'd seen it and it was terrifying or stupid, or they hadn't and wanted the link more than anything or that they were sure that it didn't exist at all. Then there are the rare posts with accurate descriptions which, more or less, matched what I'd seen. 76 Steeler 9 said that he'd watched the video in a series of posts on Reddit, growing more panicked and incomprehensible with each one. His final post came nine days after the first and simply read, I can never close my eyes again, so onward to the abyss. That was posted almost two years ago by a user with nearly five years of history before in hundreds of unrelated communities, and he hasn't posted anything since. It plays out this way with every plausible viewer. They post about watching it and then disappear inside two weeks. As I chased white hairs down the rabbit holes of the internet, I saved screenshots and entire threads to PDF and organized them in folders by date, source, and screen name. I compiled lists and plotted a timeline of the video spread, and I even started trying to track down actual locations for the viewers. I don't remember a time before that I became so meticulously committed to something, but suddenly putting every piece I could find together became a passion project. Meanwhile, my phone played the video in a nearly continuous loop, and I always turned my attention to it as the lady opened her mouth as she always did. Wider, wider, wider. 
Her teeth seem to extend from jaws that press out of her face past the ragged flaps where her lips should be, and the pale glow at the back of her throat shined brighter. A thumping on my door shook me from the trance the video had me in, and my father hollered at me to go pick up dinner. It's 6.30, I realised. Where the hell did the day go? I set my phone down and stood up to look at my tired reflection against the blackness in the windows. For a split second, the video popped onto my computer screen in the reflection, but when I glanced back with a start, nothing was there. I stepped away from the video for the first time in 24 hours when I left to get our takeout, taking winding back roads to let my head clear. The longer I spent away from it, the more a desire rose inside me to get back to it, to watch it again, to read and learn more. As I waited in line at the pizza shop, that's exactly what I did, and I noted the sense of disappointment when they called my name to pay and I had to get back in my car and drive home. I was about halfway there on a twisting road when I noticed the sound. It was a soft hum at first, just barely detectable, but then it slowly got louder. At first, I wondered if something was wrong with my car, but then I realised it was coming through the speakers like the dead space on a vinyl record before the music starts. I glanced at my phone and saw the movie playing. I tried to keep my eyes on the road as it played out like it always did, floating towards the columns of cages, the rows of sentries and their prisoners. This time though, one of the prisoners turned back and looked directly at the camera. He was a man of perhaps twenty, with tired, sagging eyes and a look of hopeless desperation behind them. Around him, the cages were in much sharper focus and I could see the silhouettes of bizarre creatures within. None of that was in the video before, I thought to myself. The car veered slightly and I corrected it with a jerk of the wheel. I hit the power button to put the phone to sleep but the video kept playing and zoomed towards the lady as the rattling chatter grew louder. Holding the button down did nothing and the video continued as the lady began to fill the screen. I slapped the phone face down on the passenger seat and turned off the car stereo, but the sound started pouring out of the phone at impossibly high volume and, as hard as I tried, I couldn't ignore it. I grabbed the phone again in one hand and held the wheel tightly with the other. I looked from the road to the screen where the molecular demons encircled the lady's cage. Their featureless, expressionless, porcelain white faces were nothing more than a pair of hollow spheres for eyes and a void mouths, inside which silver teeth reciprocated against each other mechanically like pistons. That's the sound, I thought, and as I looked out over the voltaic ocean of them, I realised they are cheering. I glanced back at the road as the lady's mouth began opening as it always did in the video's terminus. This time, her skin stretched so tightly against her cheekbones that it was pulled down below her eye sockets, exposing the orbital bone underneath. Her jaws seemed to press forward like mandibles, opening much too wide for any human, and in front of rows of human-like teeth, a pair of crystalline fangs began to protrude from the outer edges of her gums. Inside the blackness of her throat, the glowing object became clearer. The image, peering back at me, broke through the film's black and white palette and glimmered with golden light. And then finally, I could see it. A face. In the back of the dark void of her throat was the shimmering spectre of a human face, haunted and filled with horror. Dread froze every muscle in my body as the bleating cry of a car horn sent an electrical shock through me. I wrenched the wheel, swerving away from an oncoming car and into an approaching turn. I panicked stood on the brakes and the car skidded and slid into the grass embankment before coming to a merciful stop. I buried my face into the steering wheel and below me was the phone where it had landed on the floor between my legs. The lady slowly closed her mouth and swallowed the spirit within as she stared through the phone into me with those floating specks of light in her endlessly black eyes. At home, I barely talked to my parents as I scarfed down dinner before retreating to my room. 
Despite my shattered nerves, the desire to watch again was more potent still, and I think that was the first time I truly felt scared of what was happening. The first time that sensation that I'd poked a dragon came over me. It was the first time I thought of asking for help. My brother's four years older than me, and substantially less of a fuck up. He's already out of college and doing web app development for a big tech company. I spent a long time trying to figure out how to ask for help, and I landed on the link itself. The long string of alphanumerics with no domain or subdomain was unlike any URL I'd seen before. What the fuck is that? He responded when I sent it to him. Just a link for a vid. Can you help me figure out what it is? No, it isn't, he replied, then sent another. Wait, are you on tour? Lol. What kind of fucking video? What's tour? Just hit play. I'm not sure I'd want to, lol, but nothing's loading anyway. Hang on. I waited, and after a few minutes he asked, What browser are you using? Safari. And you are saying a website is loading and a video is playing? Yes. Yeah, man, that's not a real URL. Look at this. He linked a site called GitHub for a page with lines of code. That's a boilerplate markup structure for a generic website. It tells your browser how it should render and display the site, and it's basically how every web page is structured. It contains elements like scripts, templates, and links. Use the instructions at the bottom of that page to inspect the elements on your page and tell me what happens. A screen opened, showing a menu with a layout similar to GitHub's, but instead of orderly and coherent code, there was a seemingly random assortment of letters, numbers, and even some symbols I didn't recognize. I took a screenshot and sent it to him. Yeah, dude, that's gibberish. There's no markup, no layout or style sheets, no host, no CDN, no scripts, no nothing. It's not a real web page. Take a screenshot of the video. I tried, but the screenshots were blank. They showed a browser window, the URL in it, and a white screen with nothing else. It won't work. My guess is you've got some nasty malware. It might even be spoofing a browser to fuck with you. Either that, or it's just referring to a local file buried in your phone. If something you don't recognize prompts you to pay to remove it, don't. Run a malware scan and reset your phone if you need to. And stop watching weird shit. I thanked him and silently prayed that he was right, but a sick feeling in my gut told me he wasn't. I wanted more than anything to believe that this was indeed some kind of sick joke, or almost anything. Despite the fear and dread, my desire to keep watching, to keep investigating, to keep moving deeper into the video remained. Almost intuitively, my thumb moved to click play again. No, I thought to myself. Enough! I closed the window and instead read detailed instructions about clearing viruses and malware, downloaded every recommended cleaner, and ran them. I cleared my cache, deleted temporary files, updated the OS, and reset my browsers before restarting my phone. And when it came back to life, the video and the link were gone. The desire, the withdrawal, was there, but I felt contentment in the decision. I went to sleep, and darkness washed over me the moment my head hit the pillow. When I awoke in that same darkness in the dead of night, I didn't know why. I laid awake in the haze of receding slumber as my eyes acclimated and I tried to detect what had woken me. The sound of my breathing was all I could hear and the night felt silent, but my mind insisted something was amiss. Then I heard it. A soft ratcheting. The soft, symmetrical, mechanical rattling whispered through the darkness, and I sat up to turn my head to triangulate the source of the noise. I stood up carefully, 
felt around in the darkness for my phone and then flicked on the flashlight. Nothing seemed out of place and I continued trying to find the direction of the noise. Finally, I moved towards my desk and my eyes fell on my headphones lying across the keyboard. I picked them up and placed them closer to my head. I set them down, brushed the mouse pad, and the screen lit up the room with the lady's face. Her teeth came together as her mouth closed, and the ethereal remains of the spirituous face disappeared into the dark chasm of her throat. Dozens of molecular demons riotously cheered in throngs around the cage, and as I reached down to close the laptop, the lady lunged at the screen. At me and for a second I felt a static force that sent me tumbling backward onto my bed. Then, in front of me, she was on the bars of the cage, racing across them like a spider. New motion in the corner of the screen caught my attention, and two of the massive sentries came forward clutching a struggling captive between them. He looked like another young man, his body pulsating with an aura of light against the dim, monochrome world with featureless matte grey sentries and the vapid white demons. To the right of the cage, an old man in a tailcoat and top hat came into view. His face was sickly, with shriveled eyes recessed into their sockets and broadly spaced teeth behind a madman's smile. A ring of keys hangs from his waistcoat, and, as I looked closer, I could see his bottom half didn't belong to a man at all, but rather morphed into a tree trunk growing into the ground. The lady raced faster along the bars with manic insect speed to the chittering clatter of the demons, and with an impossibly long arm, the tree-like ringmaster reached towards the cage. Clasped in his hand, which was more foliage than fingers, was a cylindrical skeleton key which he slipped into the cage's threshold. Suddenly, the sound of a human voice screaming broke through the chattering static, and, in a single motion, the sentry stepped forward with their prisoner and disappeared. Instantaneously, the two of them reappeared like guards on either side of the cage as the screaming victim materialised inside of it. The lady froze, and the demons fell silent so abruptly that, for a moment, I thought the video had stopped. The only movement came from the man, standing, shaking behind the bars, and for agonising seconds he shivered in that cage. And then, the lady was simply on him. I didn't register it if she actually moved, but now she was attached to his back, arms and legs wrapped hopelessly around him. His final shriek rang out, and she threw her head back, the fangs extended as her mouth tore open like a gaping wound, and she brought them down on him, and the screaming stopped. The process wheel appeared, and the screen became perfectly still. I found the strength to stand and went forward to turn the computer off, but something caught my attention. I looked closer at the victim and saw that the glow emanating from him was still pulsing in a rhythmic rise and fall, and then he blinked, and his eyes darted from side to side. The screen was frozen, and the process wheel kept turning, but his petrified eyes still moved. I weakly reached forward and closed the laptop, switched off the light on my phone and sat there in the darkness. To this day, I don't know if I'd ever had an opportunity to turn and run from the video, so somehow escape it after I'd seen it. What I did know at that moment, though, was that it was too late to run, and it was going to keep playing again and again, whether I wanted it to or not. Thank you guys, ghouls, and girls for watching. Please feel free to connect with me on my Discord server, and if you want to watch me live, check out my Twitch channel. I am very active on both platforms and even have scheduled streams. I would absolutely love to see you there. Links to my other social media platforms are in the description below. Stay spooky.
Thank you.